All right, ladies and gentlemen, front brakes on a 98 Mustang GT. I'm sure this is for a 94 through 98 at least, probably more years than that. But here we go. I already did the passenger side, same thing on the driver's side. So you're gonna take the uh, wheel lug nuts off. Mine are three fourths, I took them all off. You're gonna remove the wheel. I got everything jacked up. Please put a brace under there and chalks in the back. Got to be safe. And what we're going to do to change these is you're going to take this off and this off. This is new hardware that I got from AutoZone. So I know this is a 10. This is a Allen. I'm not sure what size. I'll tell you in a minute. But this is a 10. We're going to take that one off first. Then we're going to take this Allen. I guess it really doesn't matter which way, but that's how we're going to do it. 10 first. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got that one on loose. Now we got to do this bottom one. Like I said, this is an Allen. I guess you call it an Allen. This is an eight. That goes in the bottom one. And that's it. Take that one out. All right. Any mechanic can tell you or anybody who works on cars, the last one is always the hardest one. So this 10 came off easy, but this one was hell. Nope, that's the 10. This is the Allen. This was hell. I don't know why. Nothing stripped down there. Just hell to come off. But we got it off. We set it up on top. These come off. And as you can see, of course, I need to get new rotors. But I want to get some slotted ones and all that. So this is just, I guess you can say, temporary. These are super done they're not gone gone but they down there especially this one this is almost riding dirty right there okay let's get the new ones uh, I just wanted to make a quick comparison old to new this is the old one cracked slim see nothing on there this is the new one Look how thick that is. That's thick compared to that one. We are on the last leg. All right. So while you got it off, you might as well put some anti-squeak, I guess you can call it that. So you know that noise, skeet, 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 when you're rolling down the street and it's squeaking. We got something for that. This is it right here. They got it from AutoZone also. Brake lubricant. Stops brake noise, caliper slides, all contact points. So you take this. We're not going to rub it on the caliper like they say right there. But we are going to put it on the back of the brakes. All right, got lubricant on there. That's on the outside of the brake, not the inside. And show y'all how they go on there. Trying not to touch it. Wear gloves, ladies and gentlemen. See those little groovy slots? They just slip right in there. Boom. Take the other one. Wear gloves, because this stuff goes through your skin. Skin absorbs everything. But they should look like that. The pad should touch the rotor, just like that. So now, the problem we have now is, as this squeezes and squeezes those together, as they get smaller, it comes out more to help you stop. So this is not gonna fit on that. So we gotta press that in. So you go to the master cylinder you take the cap off so it can release air. So when you press it in, this comes up. Of course, this is showing full now because I pressed the other side and it came up. It probably drip out and please put a towel if you want to be clean and neat. So we got to get something to press this in so it will fit over that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we got to press the caliper, whatever it is in, the piston in. 
This is a seat clamp. We got it on the back. We got it on the front on a piece of wood. When we turn this, that is gonna squeeze that in. That's gonna blow it back out here. So we'll have something to catch that mess. You wanna be clean. So I do have a tool for this, but where the hell is it? I have no idea. It would be good to have a piece of thin metal right here so this doesn't dig in the wood. They usually come with a flat part on it, but hey, ask any mechanic. When it's time to look for stuff, you can never find it. All right, so we're gonna turn that, squeeze that in. Can't hold the phone and do it at the same time, so I'll be back. All right, we're back. You see how I twisted it and dug in the wood. If you had metal, you wouldn't have that problem, but it did press that in. So now we're gonna take it off and it should fit right over all that. And of course it fits over it perfect. So we gotta use the 10 and put that back in. Use the eight, put that back in. Put the tire on and we're done. That's it. Now as you come up here, you can see that it spilled. Uh, spilled a little around there. Try to clean it up as much as possible. So we're gonna put the top back on that. Boom. We gotta get this. Hopefully the engine's not hot. That's where you can see it. It's nice and soaked, but we got it. The rest of it will burn off. But for those of you super clean and super neat, have a towel or something you can use to catch all that. But let's put it back together. All right, all tightened up. Bottom top, that bottom one, I had to get down on it to line it up. It's always one. So we got that, we're gonna put the tire on, tighten it up, and it's a wrap. All right, ladies and gentlemen, finished job, tire's on. We just gotta put it down, tighten it up to specs. One thing I wanted to add before you go to the other side, when you're taking that caliper off, if you got the original hardware, it's probably a, a, a star pattern on one of them, and both of them, as a matter of fact, I think star pattern uh, male at the top and a star pattern female at the bottom. I don't know why the hell Ford did that dumb stuff, but that's what they did. Be careful. You can probably use a, a 12 point or whatever, 12 point to get that top one off. We used the correct one. I stripped my bottom one and I got lucky and got it off before I replaced it with AutoZone hardware, which is a lot easier. What the hell was Ford thinking? And now that I look at this, I got a split in my tire. But if it's the same old hardware anyway, maybe just change it out anyway. It's easier with the AutoZone hardware. A 10 and an eight, that's it. Instead of all that other star patterns you got to go buy to get it off but be careful because i stripped mine and you will go through hell if you strip that bolt take your tire off strip it get one out strip it the second one and can't get your caliper back on so you have no brakes no car and if it's your only car it will be a long day maybe a long week etc so make sure you got the right sizes Get it off and maybe go get some new hardware from AutoZone, which is a lot easier. All right, that's it. Hopefully you learned something. Learn from my mistakes and uh, look forward to the next video. One more thing, ladies and gentlemen. I had a watch. I got it pretty reasonable. And I used to work out on, work on cars with it all the time. You know, I've got it so reasonable, I didn't really care and kind of jacked it up, got it dirty to where you can't clean it, messed up the band. It's still a nice watch, but I can tell it's messed up. But then one day I wanted a new one and I went online and the price they wanted for that watch, negative. And I'm sick that I use mine for mechanic work. So now I got this one on and I didn't cover it up good, and I got the band a little dirty. Band is 
a little dirty down there from working on a car with your watch on. And I know I paid a whole lot for this watch, too damn much. So take your jewelry off when you're working on a car. Rings, watches, necklaces. I've had necklaces get snagged and broke. So just a word from the wise, take your jewelry off or whatever clothes, shoes that you don't want to jack up. Use mechanic clothes, dedicated mechanic clothes to do mechanic work. All right, I'll catch up.